بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وما وراءه وبعد. So today I want to answer a question that a friend posed to me yesterday, and that is, if I give zakah or make sadaqa and that charitable contribution goes to a 501c3 that gives me a tax receipt. Is it permissible for me to file a tax deduction or request a tax tax deduction based on that charitable gift or that charitable contribution? So there are a few questions or a few things that we have to answer before we even get to that question. And this is a question that is posed to me, I think, umpteen times every year and especially around two seasons, tax season and Ramadan. And right now we're finishing up tax season, we're going right into Ramadan. So inevitably you're going to be faced with it at some time right before or after Ramadan. So <clears throat> the first thing we have to understand is why do we pay taxes? Well, federal, state, municipal governments enact laws. Those laws um, regulate daily life. They're spent on the services that the governments provide. Uh, simple things like caring for the roads, police departments, fire departments, um, Medicaid, Medicare, all of that, depending upon whether it's at federal, state, or municipal level. And based upon that, uh, they need money to pay for those services. And so you tax the population. And because you're taxed, you then have representation. So that's the whole idea of no taxation without representation. So the federal government spends the money that you pay in taxes on a number of different things. It's probably the most, the most taxes that people uh, pay in their life is to the federal government. So the number one thing that the federal government will spend your tax money on is Social Security. Social Security payouts and such. Uh, secondly is defense and that has to do with everything that you can imagine and all of that bloat and spending as well. Uh, third is Medicare and then Medicaid and then lastly is interest on the national debt and then and then at the tail end are other welfare and government services or retirement programs that are auxiliary or supporting for the rest of the government. So for example, operating expenses for the Medicare, Medicaid system um, are also paid out of taxes. So if the government's doing this, why do they offer you a tax deduction? So every person that earns income in the United States, and this video is specifically to the United States, let's talk about anywhere else in the world, um, every citizen of the United States has a certain amount of tax liability and that tax liability is contingent on many different things. Uh, whether how much money you've earned, uh, how you earned it, uh, where you earned it, how many kids you have, do you own a home, uh, what are your expenses, do you have a business, are you an employee, so on and so forth. Now, I am not a tax representative, I am not a tax expert, I am not a CPA, I'm not a tax lawyer, I am not here to give you tax advice. This is not tax or legal or financial advice, this is merely for information purposes. We want to answer the question, if I pay zakat, can I take a tax deduction? So, number one, it's important to understand that if you are, have not given more than $12,000 in a year as an individual or $24,000 uh, in a year as married filing jointly, then you will pretty much take a standard tax deduction on your, on your, um, on your filing and uh, you won't have to itemize, which means that unless you've given more than that, then tallying up the individual receipts doesn't really make a difference. However, if you've given more than $12,000 in a year, then it's important that you keep those receipts because you might actually be able to get more. Now, that said, it's important that you speak to a CPA or a tax lawyer. A lot of people, I'm very surprised, um, don't use a CPA. And I can tell you that my CPA has made a huge difference in my life and saving me money and getting me more money back and making making me more aware of how to not only um, how, how to not only pay my taxes and file, but also when I go into business, I always run everything by my CPA. My good free my good friend Idris, you know, taught me the Idris Bello. He taught me this idea of having you know your personal board of directors, and part of that personal board of directors has to be uh, having a CPA. 
um, someone that not only understands taxes, understands business, understands what you do and who you are, and can take that burden off of you. So if you don't have a CPA, get one. You might say, oh my gosh, it's $500 to get him to do my taxes. Guess what? I've had years where, you know, that $500, um, you know, banked me thousands of dollars that I saved through proper filing. Whereas if I had pri filed improperly, I would have ended up owing money or had lost that money. So, okay, so if everyone has a tax liability, if everybody has to pay the government because the government provides services, then why does the government offer a tax reduction or deduction? Well, the motivation for a issuing a tax break or a tax deduction is commonly to stimulate the economy. So if you're giving charity, if you are uh, spending, if you're uh, buying a home, if you're paying for education, then the government wants you to put more money into those things instead of elsewhere. So it, you're not just hoarding your money and saving it, you are trying to do something with it which stimulates the economy. So because you do that, you are then given a tax deduction. So one of those things is charitable giving. Now, I'm gonna use an extremely basic example here and do not take this verbatim. The numbers, the percentages, everything here is completely made up and you should talk to a CPA to find out how this will work for you. But I'm gonna use this example because I want you to understand that the money that you pay in taxes is not the same money that you gave in zakat or gave as sadaqah. And that is what trips most people up year after year. They think like, oh, if I put in a tax deduction, I'm getting a rebate or a refund of my, my charity. That's not the case. So let's say that you make $6,000 in a month and you pay 25% of that as taxes. This is just completely made up numbers. So 25% of that is going to be $1,500. Now, because you've done, you've, uh, you know, let's take your gross income, 6,000 minus uh, 1,500, what are you left over with? 4,500. Let's say that you gave $250 to your local masjid on Friday, you gave $250 to your local soup kitchen to help the, the needy, and then you gave $500 uh, to a zakat eligible charity that all, all of them gave you receipts. So now you've got receipts for $1,000 of charitable contributions and you have already paid $1,500 in tax. The government will say, okay, why don't, if you have receipts, show us receipts for the money that you've given in society as a charitable contribution. And if you do that, we'll give you 50% of, it, uh, uh, of, of the value of that back. Meaning that if you spend $1,000, then you're gonna get $500 back. $500 back, actually not $500 back, we're going to reduce your tax liability by $500. So instead of paying $1,500 in our completely made up example with made up numbers, you're gonna pay what? $1,000. Which means that uh, you are now, in st at the end of the month, instead of being left with $3,500, because that was your $6,000 minus $1,500 in tax, minus $1,000 in charity, you are then left with, how much? $4,000. So that money comes back to you at the end of the year. Now, it's important to remember, this is a made up example, but the clean numbers are simply to show you how it works. When I file a tax deduction, I'm not getting my sadaqah or my zakah back. I'm getting my freestanding wealth that the government took from me back. So my charity goes to the local refugee services, it goes to the local chair, the local shelter, it goes to the soup kitchen, it goes to the masjid, whatever. That's used by them, it stimulates their, their spending, allows them to keep their services on and going. The government goes, hey, you gave a grand over there, guess what, I'll give you 50% back. Actually, this year it's 60%, but we'll give you 50% back, so you get $500 because you gave 1,000, and so, Instead of paying us $1,500 in taxes, you'll pay us $1,000 in taxes. That is a very, very, very basic and simple way to look at it. Please, though, get yourself a CPA and find out um, uh, how this can work for you. Find out uh, what you're giving. And having a CPA and having a smart 
tax strategy is part of a broader stewardship strategy. And stewardship here we mean the idea of كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ إِنِّي جَعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ All of these texts that, you know, every one of you is a shepherd, I'm placing a steward or a custodian in the land. All of these texts mean that we have to give our zakah, pay our sadaqah, pay our kafarat, do our udhiya, uh, give general sadaqah in a manner which is most effective where we are and increases our freestanding wealth and maximizes the effect of our charity. And I've talked about this in different in, in, in instances. Uh, it's super important to, to, to be most effective wherever you can with your charity. So, to sum it all up, when you pay, give sadaqah or you pay zakah, is it wrong for you to claim a tax deduction or to submit those receipts for, for a charitable deduction? And the emphatic answer is it is absolutely not wrong. It is right for you to do so. In fact, you should do this so that you can make sure that your money is being used for things that you value and in ways that you believe are right and ethical. And if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.